Well, this is a video I was hoping and expecting to make earlier in the season, but better late than never, I suppose, as the New York Mets have called up DH slash first baseman slash third baseman Mark Vientos. In this video, I'm going to talk about my reaction to Mark Vientos being called up, the impact he can have on this Mets team right now, and for the rest of the season. If you like this video, going over a breaking news story with the New York Mets, make sure to hit that like button at the ballpark. Slide into the comment section. What are your thoughts on the Mark Vientos call up? And more importantly, what are your thoughts on the timing of it? Because that's going to be one of the big topics I'm going to cover in this video. And if you're new here, you want to help the channel grow and really make my day, you can subscribe. It's always greatly appreciated. And if you're subscribed already, tell a friend, tell a family member, tell a stranger, tell a pet, whatever it takes up the channel. It's always appreciated. So, Mark Vientos, it is about time this guy is on the Major League roster for the New York Mets. It had been pretty obvious for a while. I mean, if it was up to me, he would have been here a long time ago. The past few weeks or so, we have seen some really bad inconsistencies with this New York Mets offense, and far too many times we're seeing them score less than three runs, two runs, one run. And it was very frustrating when you're seeing guys like Darren Ruff not get the job done, and we talked about going into the trade deadline, you know what, the Mets could really use a full-time everyday DH somebody that is really going to help protect Pete Alonso and could be a guy that could help you every single game not a platoon player which so far has not worked out Daniel Vogelback got off to a great start I personally believe the hamstring injury to Daniel Vogelback is why we've seen such a decrease in his effectiveness I know he's not a runner but I do think that your hamstring is still part of being in the batter's box especially with the kind of unorthodox stance that Vogelback has having a mess up hamstring has to make it tougher to hit that's just common sense right there let's be frank about it and then Darren rough i see it every week on the mets weekly channel but we see him get a few lucky ground balls against the braves when he first got here but after that he has done absolutely nothing this is a guy that was brought in here to be a specialist against left-handed pitching and he has not gotten the job done whether he's facing righties whether he's facing lefties he has not been effective he still has not hit a single home run for new york mets but Mark Vientos, on the other hand, that is one thing that he does really well. He just did it last night. He had a home run off the batter's eye. Yes, it was the minor leagues, but it was a no-doubter. You could tell that Mark Vientos has serious power. I mean, he doesn't get home runs that are cheapies. He hits absolute bombs. I would post the video in this video, but of course, it would get copyrighted. So if you go to my Twitter, at Frank D. Cugino, I'll have it on there so you can see the home run I'm talking about because it really was something to see. It was very impressive. And that's something that Vientos has done all year long it seems like constantly on twitter we're seeing oh Mets prospect mark vientos had a home run had two home runs today so we're always seeing him do things but when he's not hitting those home runs the two things that vientos was doing a lot of was striking out and hitting the ball on the ground a ton luckily the strikeouts have gone down quite a bit the ground ball rate it's still a little higher than you would like to but i think compared to what the new york mets have now particularly depth wise on their bench they have got to get another guy in here that is a power hitter, that can be a threat. Prior to this week, it had been a while since we had seen P. Alonso's last home run. The same goes for Francisco Lindor. Escobar has hit some home runs this past week. You saw Tyler Naquin have a good series against Pittsburgh. From Nimmo, you'll get maybe a couple home runs a month. McNeil, very rare again, a home run. You're not getting any home runs from the catchers. So you need somebody else to really give you that power threat. It isn't easy to always rely on an offense that is single-driven, where you, you have to rely on three guys or four guys getting three straight hits or four straight hits to drive in just one run. That's a very tough blueprint to build on. You would like to have just a little more of a threat where, okay, we got two hits or even just one hit. Now all we need is just one big hit in the home run. It just makes it easy to score runs when you have that kind of potential in your lineup. I prefer a team that is not home run reliant, but you need to have at least some home runs if you want to be an upper echelon offense. Even though the Mets won that series against the Dodgers, it was pretty glaring that the New York Mets still struggle against left-handed pitching. Starling Marte and Mark Cannon were really carrying that team for the most part against the starting pitchers that they faced. Heaney, Anderson, Kershaw. Because since Ruff was giving you nothing against lefties, you needed somebody that could do that. And Mark Vientos this season, again, being in the minor leagues, and 1,140 OPS against lefties, which is just absolutely crazy. I mean, that's something the Mets really need. Obviously, he's not going to give you that, but if he could give me close to 800, that would be much better than what we're getting from Darren Ruff and a lot of these other guys. As far as Vientos' overall numbers, this is a guy that for the season has 24 home runs, 72 runs driven in, 
280 average, 358 on base, and an 877 OPS. So he's had a good year all season long. He had been doing pretty well for the most part. Again, there was the strikeout numbers, there was the ground ball numbers, but for the most part, Vientos was still doing a lot more than plenty of the other guys that we've had on this roster. Now let's talk about his weaknesses because it's like, well, wait a minute, if this guy is such a great hitter, why didn't they call him up earlier? And based on the way the Mets have gone with their roster manipulation, it seems like Mark Vientos' lack of defensive versatility is what has really held him back from being called up. Now I know they have him listed as a third baseman, but it's been a while since he's played third base. If anything, this year with Syracuse, he's been doing a lot of DHing, a lot of first base. He is not good at third base. There was some thought last season that maybe Mark Vientos could be moved to left field in order to have third base wide open for Brett Beatty but that's something the Mets have not really experimented with this year either because again that's not his game he's not a speed threat he's not this amazing athlete that can play all these different positions and if you look at what the Mets did when they had those two extra roster spots open up for September 1st they called up Devin Murray because he can play third base and he could play shortstop so because Murray had more defensive versatility even though he is nowhere near the hitter that Mark Vientos is the Mets decide to call him up. And so far in September, we've seen very, very little of Devin Marrero. So I didn't think it was the best use of a roster spot at the time. I still don't. I don't like the mindset that the Mets have taken in a huge division race where you've now lost first place that we keep planning for all these emergencies and not playing for the right now not to win today's game but just to be covered for all these emergencies like when we have no shortstop when we have no backup catcher because we can't pinch hit for catchers we can't use trevor williams in any other role besides long relief so that means if he doesn't pitch for two weeks at least we have him covered for emergencies and we can't use edwin diaz when it's a one-run game and we're losing and we can't use seth lugo instead we have to use joelly rodriguez and tommy hunter and montez de Oca. I just don't like the way the Mets have gone about this. They've had a poor month of September, extremely disappointing. We heard so much, oh, well, don't worry. Once it gets to September, you have all these easy teams, and they have not gotten the job done so far. They've really been struggling on offense. So is Mark Vientos going to come in here and solve the Mets offense, and all of a sudden they're going to take off and get the division lead back and win the division just because Mark Vientos got called up and they have more offense now? I hope so. Baseball is not really that kind of sport where one guy could carry you, but I hope that just... He can give a little bit of a spark. And if Vientos could do that, maybe it'll help the other guys step up emotionally, psychologically, whatever the case is. They needed to try something. It's about time. So if you guys enjoyed this video, again, let me know what you think about the Mets calling on Mark Vientos. I know it's been a while since I posted. It's tough. You know, I've done game recaps. They don't tend to do particularly well. I've been doing the weekly recaps on the Mets Weekly channel every single Sunday. So make sure you guys subscribe to that channel. But let me know what kind of videos you want to see. Obviously, in the offseason, it's much easier. There's more news and things like that. But, I mean, would you want me to go over topics like ranting about how bad Darren Ruff is or how much Devin Murrow frustrates me or how much I can't stand Yoan Lopez is or do you want videos like that so just let me know what you guys want to see I'll bring it to you until the next one be safe be smart be healthy let's go Mets go get the division lead back